Hi and welcome to the ERPNX uh, Flappy Developer Training Session 6. Uh, this is Rushab. This training has been recorded by Anand and me and uh, we, we are building an application that helps you track meetings, uh, minutes of meetings, attendees, agenda and all of that. So far we've created the app, we've, uh, we've created talk types, we have added some functionality, we've been able to send out invitation emails to uh, attendees. A quick reminder that uh, the best way to make use of these tutorials is by actually uh, making what we are doing side by side. So if you haven't really done the other tutorials, uh, you should just reach the stage uh, where, where the project is right now. And if you ever need help, you can look at the reference code or uh, post a query on the forum or just uh, connect with us on chat. Now what we are going to do is we are going to uh, fix up the navigation. So as you would have seen on your desktop, uh, we have a module created for meeting and it doesn't really make sense to have a special icon for meeting, especially when you have a lot of icons for ERP next. So let's move this icon as a link inside the tools uh, module. So what we can do is, uh, so uh, all, all the configuration regarding modules and what appears on the desktop is in the config folder. And in your desktop.py, you see there was a entry for the meeting module. Now what we're going to do is we're going to extend the tools module, which is already present as a part of the desk module in Frappe. So to extend the, the items inside the desk module, we're going to create a new file for desk. We call it desk.py. And uh, we'll quickly add uh, an additional entry to the tools section. So to just see what kind of entries are there in the tool section we're going to just uh, open up to do and uh, uh, we're just going to open up the tool section inside frappe and then just copy paste an entry for example a to do entry and then uh, just modify the entry so as you see the desk module in frappe has uh, tools and you can see to do and uh, calendar and messages and all of that so when you so we just copy the to do section and we move it inside the desk.py in the meeting app and there we are now we just have to change uh, some of the information so that it points to the meeting uh, top type that we created And now inside the doc type module, we see that the meeting app is created. We just have to remove this so that the meeting icon no longer appears inside the desktop. Or we can just remove the desktop.py file and uh, move it to trash. Now let us just quickly refresh the screen and we'll see that uh, we see a meeting app and after refresh, the, the oops, the meeting app should have gone away. But uh, what we so you see meeting here in inside the inside of uh, inside the tools module, but we still haven't been able to get rid of a meeting. It is because there has been uh, uh, since we deleted the Python file, by the we haven't deleted the compiled file. So. If you just quickly list through all the items inside the config module, you still see that the desk.pyc, uh, the meeting.pyc file is already there. So, so you remove the file and we, we refresh, then the meeting module should disappear. So that's the end of the meeting module. Um, now let's do one more thing. Let's create a calendar view for the meetings. So in, in the standard Frappe calendar view, we should be able to see uh, all the meetings uh, that are scheduled for the month or the week. Um, so let's pick up another, so just to see how the calendar definition is done, let's just pick it up from leave application. And then what we need to do is we need to create a new file which is called meeting underscore calendar dot js, which is the name of your doc type underscore calendar dot js. And here we just uh, replace all the uh, leave application 
properties with a meeting. What you really need for a calendar view, you just need the start time, end time, the title and the status, and then you can define what uh, headers and what uh, views you want uh, for that particular calendar. And we need to define a server side method that will return all the minutes for a given period. So we will write, we'll have to write a function called uh, get um, uh, a whitelisted function to get uh, all the meetings for the given period. So you just call it get meetings. And we will be passed all these properties uh, start end uh, from date to date. <clears throat> So now we need to write a query to return the list of all the meetings. So let's just see where, where we can find a simple query. We can just copy and modify it quickly. So just let us look at leave application. So leave application has a very complicated list because it, uh, it has to show the calendar based on whether who's applying leave or if that person is a leave uh, approval. Okay, let's just start writing a simple query so that returns the minutes of the uh, minute within the given uh, start and end conditions. So welcome to the first thought bubble of this session. Uh, here we'll discuss about the frappe.db.sql function. You can use this function to run a direct query to the database. And uh, you, it can, it will, if it's a select query, it can return values as a list or a dictionary. Uh, in Frappe, though we have an ORM, we also encourage uh, you using uh, SQL directly because it's so powerful and uh, it has a lot of benefits. So use, uh, f feel free to use a Frappe or DB to SQL for reads, but make sure for writes you use the ORM. Thanks. Now back back to the session. So again, since it's a whitelisted method, uh, this can be called by any logged in user. So we'll have to again check whether that particular user has permission to save, uh, to view the minute. So we'll just say that if the user does not have permission to read the meetings, then we'll just send out a message uh, through an exception saying that the user does not have any permission. So again, here you can throw standard FRAP ex ex exceptions like permission error. So this will automatically show the right message to the user and also throw the right uh, HTTP error code, which is 403 for a permission error. Frappe also, we can, we can directly query the, the database for all the minutes that we want within that particular period. So again, here we have not given the right uh, parameters because the parameters require a start and end. We'll just rename all the variables for consistency sake. Again, there seems to be a error in the query. The right function to create a datetime object in SQL is timestamp and not datetime. So there we are. We have the year Phoenix community meetup show up in, in the calendar at the given date. So that's how you connect. Uh, uh, that's how you connect a calendar view to um, to a doc type. Again, we're just having we're just seeing the month view, so we need we. We don't need all those parameters, so let's just refresh and use all the standard views that are available in the calendar. So there we are, the community meetup is showing up, but it's not showing up at the correct time. So we need to update our query so that it shows the current start and end time. 
we'll have to say it's not an all-day event, so probably we'll have to set all-day as false. So let's just refresh, and there we are. It's showing the correct, showing the the meeting at the correct time in the calendar. So great. So now we've learned how to build calendar views. So let us now uh, add the colors to the indicators. So to uh, to be able to uh, configure list views, we'll have to add underscore list js file. So now again, we just copy the uh, standard list js from um, from from say delivery note or some of the other files, other list files. What what we can do is uh, we, uh, in, in the list here, we can write a get indicator function that will return the color and, and, and the filter that indicator has. So we have our statuses such as planned, um, uh, planned, completed, canceled. So we, we can have a color for each, a separate color for each of the status. So it looks really nice in the list views. So here, as we see by refreshing, the color of the indicator has turned orange, as you would expect. And let's create one more meeting with the new status and see if the colors come all right. Yes, so we've seen the different color types of meetings coming with different colors. And that's uh, so. So thanks for listening into session six of the Frappe Developer Training. In the next session, we'll learn how to use hooks and connect to different applications on the site. See you next time.